Hello, I'm Rachel Aderley, a first-year PhD student at the Museum National d'Histoire Naturelle and at the Marine Station of Dina. I'm going to present the work of my colleagues, Alice Valentini, Visote Young, and Jean-Luc Jung, and myself, in which several other stakeholders have also participated, which is entitled Improving Marine Megafauna Knowledge with eDNA, a French Story. Large-scale biodiversity loss caused by climate change and anthropogenic activities has been documented in ecosystems around the world. In this context, biodiversity assessments are essential, on the one hand to understand its erosion and, on the other, to plan and monitor conservation strategies. France, as the second largest exclusive economic zone in the world, and over 30% of these areas are now marine protected areas, known as MPAs. In MPAs, the protection of cetaceans is a major concern, reflected in MPA management plans and taken into account in European directives, such as the Marine Strategy Framework Directive. For example, the choice of site for the creation of France's first marine nature park in the Ira Sea was influenced by the presence in the area of the greatest specific diversity of marine mammals in metropolitan France. Sanctuaries dedicated specifically to marine mammals have even been set up, for example, in the West Indies with the Agoa Sanctuary. The main questions concerning marine mammals are numerous. Which species are present all year round or only temporarily? What is their abundance and genetic diversity? What about the impact of human activities? The study of marine megafauna presents difficulties that are regularly overcome by using methods based on genetic techniques. Cetaceans can also, and much understanding has come from these approaches in recent years, be studied using their DNA. Molecular metabarcoding makes it possible to extract several short DNA sequences from a single sample, enabling us to simultaneously detect the presence of several taxa. Environmental DNA, or eDNA, refers to DNA extracted from an environmental sample, like water taken from the sea on a boat, which, through metabarcoding, can be used to draw up an inventory of the taxa present in this environment. To carry out a study based on eDNA, a three-step process is generally followed. First, the sampling sites are selected and seawater is taken from them. Then the sequences obtained are compared with a database or reference bank. And finally, the taxonomic assignment is carried out, which consists of linking each molecular operational taxonomic unit to a taxon, such as the genus or the species. EDNA offers new prospects for biodiversity inventories, especially as analysis based on these techniques make it easier to detect rare, cryptic, or invasive species in a non-invasive way. Here, we present a case study carried out in the Northeast and Northwest Atlantic within the boundaries of French marine protected areas, the Iroise Sea, the Martinique Natural Marine Park, and inside the Guadeloupean archipelago. So the first campaign was carried out in the Iroise Marine Park. In this MPA, eight sampling sites were defined and 16 samples were taken. We looked for the presence of marine mammals in all the samples and for the presence of elasmobranchs, so rays and sharks, in only two samples. The results of the data analysis of the DNA samples detected the presence of marine mammals in all the samples. The presence of gray seals and arbor poisposes was detected at some sites, and that of probably bottlenose dolphins at all sites. Four species of elasmobranchs were also detected. A similar campaign was carried out in the Martinique Natural Marine Park. 13 sites, so six coastal sites and seven oceanic ones, were chosen. This time, we looked for elasmobranchs, teleosts, and cetaceans in all the samples. The manipulations made it possible to detect 193 teleost taxa, 
representing more than half of the species expected in Martinique. Three cetacean species were detected. So a very significant presence of pantropical spotted dolphins and Fraser's dolphins was detected in all the coastal sites on the Caribbean coast and the taxon belonging to the Delphinines subfamily in two oceanic sites. The analysis carried out in Martinique highlight several remarkable sites for biodiversity. The aim of the third survey in Guadeloupe was to compare the taxonomic diversity of the same transect, so five kilometers long along the west coast of the island, at several day intervals, so four consecutive days in 2021 and two consecutive days in 2022. In Guadeloupe, all samples were analyzed for vertebrates, that is to say birds, fish, and mammals. For teleosts, we detected no fewer than 114 taxa over six days of sampling. This figure shows the number of each ecological group of teleosts identified during sampling. Generally speaking, pelagic fish, so here in blue, make up a large proportion of the taxa identified. Deep sea fish, in black, were also regularly identified, and the numbers of reef fish in green varied considerably from one day to the next. As the samples were taken at the surface in the open sea, they can only detect organisms that release DNA in this area, which explains the large number of pelagic fish identified. The fact that we found fish living at depth can be explained by their nictemeral migrations, and for reef fish, the detection and variability can be explained by their pelagic larval phase. Jacquard dissimilarity values were computed between the samples. So this index is calculated using the formula presented here, where A is the number of taxa common to both samples, and B and C, the taxa detected only in one or the other sample. The results obtained show high dissimilarity values between the samples, reflecting a high degree of variability in their respective taxonomic composition. With regard to cetaceans, the samples detected 10 distinct cetacean taxonomic units and at least three distinct species, which are the Pseudorca, the Fraser's dolphins, and probably the Boltonnose dolphin. However, it has not been possible to assign certain cetacean species sequences to the species, notably because taxonomic identifications between the 11 species of Delphinine is often complex which is why it is planned to develop new primers to better discriminate between Delphinidae species. In addition, eDNA samples can be used to study population genetics. I did my two masters internship on bottlenose dolphins in Guadeloupe, and in this context, I was able to show that eDNA could be used to discriminate between two recently recognized groups of bottlenose dolphins, coastal, and pelagic bottlenose dolphins show indeed a fixed nucleotide difference on the barcode targeted by mammal specific primers. Techniques based on the study of eDNA samples therefore offer new prospects for improving our knowledge of marine megafauna. At present, one of the major challenges for the development of eDNA approaches is to develop methods for storing the resulting data. As part of my PhD, I aim to participate in the development of databases for eDNA. I'm aware of the specific task group of an environmental sample in eDNA, and I'd like to be a part of the group, since we have data that can be used as use cases. Finally, as part of our study, our data sets will be freely available through open platforms following the FAIR, findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable principles. Here you can find my references. I thank you all for your attention.